Hello, in this video we're going to do a very simple proof, but it's important to know how to do it, so if you're watching this video and you don't know how to do it, hopefully you learn something. So let alpha be a complex number. We have to prove that the absolute value of alpha is equal to the absolute value of the conjugate of alpha. This is also called the modulus, so let me just refresh your memory on what all of this means. So if z is a complex number, that means we can write it as x plus yi, where x and y are real numbers. The modulus of z, or the absolute value of the complex number z, is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And then the conjugate of z is the complex number that you get simply by switching the sign between uh, the x and the y here. So this is z minus yi. All right, now that we have all of this out of the way, we can do our proof here. So we'll start by letting alpha be a complex number, which means we can write it in this form where x is real and y is real. But I'm gonna use different variables just to really make sure that you understand it. So alpha be equal to a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers. Okay, so now we just basically have to show that this is true. Let's start with this one. So then, the conjugate of alpha is a minus bi. And I'm gonna write it a different way because I think in a proof like this, sometimes the confusion occurs here. Look, you can write this like this, a plus negative b times i. So then, if we look at the absolute value of the complex number, the conjugate of alpha, also called the modulus, this is equal to the square root of, so now you square the real part, and you square the imaginary part. And here's the key, when you square this, this is gonna go away, right? There's not gonna be a negative one there. This is gonna be a squared plus b squared. If, you're, if you don't understand this step, a little sidebar here, negative b squared is really negative one times b squared, and properties of exponents, which are properties of real numbers, right? This is negative one squared b squared, which is one times b squared, which is b squared. There's the proof, boom. So you can just make that step. But what is this beautiful thing? This is the conjugate of alpha, and that completes the proof because we have, rather the modulus of alpha, because we have the modulus of the conjugate of alpha, equal to the modulus of alpha, which is what we wanted to prove originally. So it went kind of quick and I explained everything hopefully. So hopefully this has helped you if you're trying to learn some mathematics. Good luck.